that old faithful saw that um, you wouldn't give up anything in the world because it's a lifelong companion. Hi guys, welcome to the first ever Home Builder Series sponsored by Roscoe Manufacturing. Uh, the purpose of these videos that you're going to see is we're going to focus on a project for each uh, chapter. That project will be uh, thrown into three different videos. First video, which you're going to be seeing today, breaks it down on uh, the build that we're going to focus on, the parts that were chosen, why they were chosen, and why it's so important to spec parts uh, as a whole instead of individually. Okay, uh, These videos were actually created to help home builders, a lot of DIY guys, which is the majority of our uh, consumer base, right? You guys buy products, you build stuff at home. The issue that we've been seeing through our customer service emails, phone calls, DMs, comments on social media is a lot of you folks don't have this technical background and that's fine. That's why we're here today. We're gonna be talking about common misconceptions, how certain part combinations create a little bit of a choke point for performance. And the reason why we're doing this, because at the end of the day, the first thing that always gets blamed is the barrel. So we figured we'd be a little bit forward thinking and attack the issues before they're even created by just offering free education for you home builders. Um, that way you can build some awesome rifles, uh, obviously use the best parts out there, which are Roscoe, coupled with some really good parts that are offered in the market that you may or may not be aware of or how they work together in the entire system. So we're gonna start breaking down all the parts that were chosen for this project, the overall idea of what this uh, finished build will look like, and we'll get started now. All right guys, without further ado, I'm gonna go over what this build will be and what the parts are by category. Uh, what we're going to be building on this chapter of the Home Builder series is a 14.5 bloodline barrel Usasoc, which is our mid-length barrel, uh, type of overall carbine. And what I mean by that, you'll see represented in the parts that I'm going to call out, it's, uh, it's kind of a general purpose carbine, right? 14.5 when paired with the right muzzle device and pin welded or permanently affixed, will give you a 16 inch overall carbine that's pretty much 50 state legal. Obviously check with local state uh, laws as well on your end to make sure that you meet all these criteria. But uh, this is kind of a general purpose build all the way around. So what we're gonna start with is the permanent home for all the parts. We teamed up with uh, one of our OEM partners, Cobalt Kinetics and they graciously offered this really badass uh, receiver set. This is the lower, this is part of their BAMF Pro line, and it was in-house Cerakoted. They, they have an in-house Cerakoted that does an amazing job uh, on, on their builds. This was done obviously in God's plaid. Uh, you know, Woodland Camo is the best. I love it, I love it, I love it and you can really see the detail on this camo job. And then paired with the upper receiver, there is no creep, no play. I know there's a lot of folks that love that type of uh, solid feel between receivers. I'm one of them. Uh, so this is really cool. And then finally is their semi-monolithic rail system and you saw how it slipped over that extended portion of the upper receiver it has a very unique system which i'm going to go into detail on now um, it has a jam nut versus a barrel nut that goes externally this goes internally this has threads on the inside diameter of this extension so let me go ahead and take this little receiver off i'll go over the specs on that in a second uh, the upper receiver which is going to be the focus because the, the heart and soul of the build right here right uh, features this jam nut design where you could see that it's internally threaded versus uh, like even one of our own handguards where the barrel nut goes over the extension that's uh, externally threaded uh, on the upper receiver. This one goes in and this area extends outward and the barrel goes into this extension 
on the upper receiver, as you can see right here. And it sits pretty snug, which is really cool. It's a, uh, what I would consider a hybrid monolithic system. Uh, and if you're familiar with monolithic systems, uh, like even Voltor has come out with, LMT has with their MRP system, uh, it's, it's a complete railed upper, right? Uh, which is cool, but it's kind of a pain in the butt when you're trying to install barrels or get under the handguard if you have to do basic maintenance, like change out a gas tube, gas block, little things like that that kind of become uh, an inconvenience at that time. And then, very simply, this jam nut goes back over the barrel and gets threaded into the upper receiver right here. Right? Once tightened, it creates a... Uh, better mounting surface, I think, uh, than traditional systems because it's pushing in instead of just resting on. And uh, the the pendulum weight of the barrel is held in place by this, this uh, piece of extrusion that's going out. And then once you put the handguard on, you know, via six smaller screws, it's a solid platform. I'm still a proponent of putting optics on this area if I needed to, right? Um, I, I like cantilever style scope mounts if I need to get it out a little bit further because I like to rest the fate of my accuracy and, and aiming capabilities on the upper receiver itself. It's a, the, the most sturdy platform. But given this new option, uh, I wouldn't mind putting maybe some 45 degree uh, uh, red dot backup mounts or something like that without worrying that the rail is gonna shift. So this is a very cool system, a very nice introduction, right? Uh, the whole goal is to have new concepts and, and new additions in the market. I gotta say kudos to uh, Cobalt Kinetics on this one. Uh, and then, and on top of the semi-monolithic system, we have this, uh, this dual drop type system. I know by now you've probably clocked it and you've seen it uh, as I've been handling the upper receiver. There are two Ford assists on this upper receiver. They sent it for me to kind of play with and see what I thought. You can see the, the plate system here holds all the, the pieces for this stuff internally. Um, so you have your traditional forward assist on this side. And you notice that when I push one, they both go in. The idea here is, and it's just one of the versions that they offer for upper receivers. The dual drop system is the third option. So if you wanted to run the bolt home without having to go to the traditional system, of a bolt release on the left side, you have the option here from the top. Um, it's something new, I'm gonna give it a try. I don't think I'm gonna love it, but at least I'll try it. I can see maybe some applications for this. If uh, maybe I was shooting prone in a precision capability or capacity, and I'm already running thumb over anyway for accuracy, and I can just run it home right here without having to manipulate the gun too much, getting off of the my, my cheek weld, you know, if I'm perfectly nestled in a comfortable spot. But again, your mileage may vary, um, different strokes for different folks. Uh, I just like that someone's trying something new and um, they offer it as an option, not as their main product. Uh, they have a model with no Ford Assist whatsoever, one with a standard Ford Assist, like we've all seen in, in upper receivers, uh, and then the dual drop system. So that's kind of neat. Next one up is the low receiver from Cobalt, which is uh, perfectly matched with the handguard and upper that I already uh, showcased and mentioned. Um, so some of the parts to call out here is Cobalt's Ambi Safety. It's a more of a 45 degree throw. You got the short lever on one side, long lever on the other. I am right-handed, so I appreciate that. Norgon style Ambi magazine release, and then their unique bolt catch right there. Uh, the trigger is a Geisley SSAE. Seeing how it is a general purpose type build, I think this is a perfect uh, trigger for this combo. And this is their proprietary in-house designed grip. This is aluminum, just like the lower receiver and the upper, um, and their trigger guard to match. And what I found kind of cool is they, uh, they signed it here at the bottom. It's a laser engraving uh, after they do the Cerakote for their custom builds they do a laser engraving signature, so it is a signature series. Another thing that was pretty neat, uh, I gotta give them credit when attention to detail comes in. This is all blended in. Seeing how this is aluminum, so is the uh, lower, upper, everything else. Before these pieces are sprayed, they are matched together, uh, and they're all hand blended, like if they were doing body work. I've seen this myself when I've been out there. This is very, very cool. 
uh, before they're sprayed in the booth, all the edges are, are, are blended together by hand and also, uh, you know, using air guns and sanding discs. Uh, you could see it when the upper is placed on the lower. You know, I showed you earlier that there was no wiggle, but here you could tell that the lines blend together very nicely. To me, uh, you know, someone who's very OCD, this right here, especially for the level of product that they're offering, is very cool. It's a hidden piece uh, that you don't see too often. So, bro, I'm gonna light this. And again, you know, the blended lines uh, between upper, lower, even the grip uh, is a nice little bit of attention to detail that I really haven't seen. It's not that common if people are doing it. So that's cool, especially for the level of product that they're pushing out. This is a nice little added feature. Uh, and again, even the handguard, once you put the handguard over the semi-monolithic system, the handguard and the end of the upper receiver here blends together. All these lines blend perfectly. So I think that's pretty cool. And then uh, standard carbine system, uh, you're gonna see here. I may swap out to an A5 afterwards, but the one thing I will swap out, as cool as this grip is, I gotta run my B5. It's just one of those things. You're gonna see a lot of commonality uh, in some of the builds that we do because, you know, creature comfort, right? I'm the one building it, I'm the one running it, so at the end of the day, my ergonomics are really gonna be catered to, uh, to what you see in the build. So I love B5, I love the grip angle of their grips. I use them a lot, uh, so I will be swapping this out. And then for buttstock, I will be running the Sopmod buttstock. You know, it's got a little bit more of a cheek weld area there. It's a little bit of a robust buttstock. Uh, it's still a 14.5, even though it's gonna be a GP build, I could still reach out uh, and get some, uh, some good hits at distance with this build. So those are the things that you're gonna see changed out on the lower. Besides that, this lower is pretty much good to go and ready to run. So I'm gonna put this one off to the side and focus the rest of my energy on the upper receiver. Especially in the military, I spent all my money on booze. I survived off ramen noodles, 29 cent cheeseburgers, and the kindness of strangers. <laughs> so now we're gonna move uh, from the back of the upper receiver all the way to the front, calling out all the accessories that are gonna be used. So at the very back, obviously, we gotta use our Raptor uh, charging handle, right? Part of our purebred accessories line. Uh, Roscoe BCG, you already know what's up. Especially with the fact that our BCGs are headspace to our barrels, right? So the bolt is headspace perfectly to the barrel. So you get that um, all in one piece when you buy the sauce pack, right? So whenever you see the sauce packs available, know that all the pieces have been perfectly just designed together. And that's the whole concept of that. Not just a cost savings bundle, but stuff that's been taken into account. The inside diameter of the gas blocks with the outside diameter or journal area of the barrels have been perfectly matched. Uh, the gas port alignment has been perfectly matched and the bolts have been had the space to those barrels. So just know that. And speaking of gas blocks, we're gonna be running our non-adjustable bloodline uh, 4140 gas block, right? Melanided, uh, protected against the elements, corrosion resistant, uh, everything else in between. And then a mid-length gas tube because this is a mid-length 14.5 USASOC bloodline barrel. Uh, besides that, for siding system, we're gonna use the Vortex AMG UH1 or Huey. Uh, this one's pretty cool. I've been wanting to play with this one for a while, so I decided to get one. The only thing is, even though this one is, I guess, set up to where it could run lower third, um, lower third was a jam for a long, long time. The build that we're setting up here is kind of a general purpose build. I've gotten used to running higher mounts not because they're cool, but for a couple reasons that I've personally done it is, uh, I've had uh, some pretty bad motorcycle accidents in my past, so my neck is always screwed up. Um, so it's kind of cumbersome to do that cool guy neck crane thing on guns, and I have to tend to do that with the uh, lower third mounting. So to achieve the ideal height, I'm gonna stack the Huey with the Unity Fast riser. This one can work with a multitude of different red dots. Check their website for specs. I've personally used it for EOTEX, the EXPS3, which is lower third height as well. And I'm gonna use it for this one. I think it complements the unit overall. Um, and it's pretty cool. The color scheme kind of blends with what, uh, 
what I have as far as the upper lower and rail. So it's kind of a happy accident. So that's what I'm going to be running as far as red dot, no magnification on this one, but seeing how I do have the taller mount. Another reason why I run that is if I want to run night vision, uh, with that gun, I can either run a passive, uh, type system, right. Where I can look through the red dot through my, uh, my night vision and then just run it without a laser. Or if I decide not to be a poor, quoting Sam Houston on this one, <laughs> uh, I can run them all on it, but I'm already set up on the riser to do so. So those are a couple of the reasons that I personally like to run higher than normal red dots or scopes, depending on the application. And then moving towards the front for illumination, I'm going to use this cloud defensive micro rain. So the cool thing about this little system uh, that I love the most, besides the powerful candela that this small little light produces, um, it sticks really close to the handguard, depending on the mount that you use. I'm not going to need anything crazy as far as the system or stacking it with uh, lasers or anything else right now. So I'm going to run a simple mount to get this as close as I can to this handguard system. And then their little tape switch is a built-in uh, addition, right? For this, uh, for this bundle that they sell. The cool thing about it, they have a cable management system that's built into the mount for the tape switch. I love it. I can clock it via the back tail cap, depending on where I need it. I can run it as snug as I want. You probably have seen this on a couple of the builds that I already have that I've showcased before. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, the rain micro for this application is perfect because it keeps everything nice and uh, kind of compact. So, and then as far as muzzle device, seeing how I do still have to meet 16 inch overall length with this 14.5 bloodline barrel, I'm going to go with the muzzle brake uh, from Surefire. Now, a couple things on this one. It's still long enough to get me to 16 inches overall length. For sure, I'm going to surpass that. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really good and capable muzzle brake. It's not the war comp system that you usually see. I don't want to necessarily run a war comp for two reasons. One, it's, it's a little bit longer than what I want on this one. And this one does exactly what I need it to do. Uh, plus it's still backwards compatible with the cans that I run from Surefire. So really cool option. I'm going to go ahead and mount this when I'm done. And then besides that, I have my lubricants and greases that I use little gunsmith trick for springs, pins and stuff that you need to hold in place while you're building. You'll probably see this in the next video when I'm building it. Uh, I dip a little bit in a, you know, very clean, uh, non lithium based, uh, grease. I use the one from breakthrough clean and it'll hold the pieces and springs in place, keep them from flying all over. And then obviously as you go through, you got to lubricate things. I use the battle born oil from, uh, breakthrough as well. So besides that, I have my tools, hammers, specific wrenches, torque wrenches, and, uh, make sure to tune in for the next video where we're going to go full in depth on what to torque, how to torque and how these pieces go together. All right. So go ahead, follow our channel, make sure to comment. If you have any questions, share this with your friends and let us know if we're heading in the right direction. Cause at the end of the day, these videos are for you guys. So we want to make sure that we're doing it right. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.